Hello, and welcome to The Lucid Lens. I would like to walk you through the case of the Nazca mummies. The timeline of events clear up some common misconceptions, highlight the blatant attempts of character assassination and logical fallacies and the repeated attempts to debunk the case, not to deny there has been some valid criticism and skepticism. Even with the incredible resources already available out there, there is still much confusion about this case, as you'd have to watch hours upon hours of content to get the whole story. What baffles me more than anything else is when I see people claiming that this case has already been debunked and is a hoax. Yet rather than being discredited and forgotten, we instead have a growing number of scientists studying the specimen. What usually happens when a hoax is exposed is people quickly disassociate themselves with it, backtrack, apologize, and generally just move on with their lives. What you don't typically see is a growing cohort of scientists putting their careers and reputations on the line, which is what's been going on here for nearly eight years. If you're already about to tap out, this is the summary. There is a fast-growing number of credible scientists of various disciplines from countries all around the world studying the Nazca specimen. Every one of these professionals who have had first-hand access to the specimen and available material have reported the following. There are no obvious signs of fabrication, and whatever they are, they were once living beings. None of these scientists are claiming these are aliens. Leave that to the community. Only that they do not match up with any known species on the planet. There's a distinction there, and this raises a lot of questions. The areas I want to touch on are, what are they, the timeline of discovery, Jaime Moussan's involvement, the various debunks, the Peruvian Ministry of Culture's efforts, and the ever-growing international team of scientists apparently signing their careers away. Intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. Let's get into the timeline. It all started with French researcher, explorer, and president of the Instituto Ancari Cusco, Thierry Zaman, who in 1998 started traveling the Amazon forest of Peru to study the presence of the Incas and search for the lost city of Paititi. Most of the following information is available on Thierry's The Alien Project website. In October 2016, a man under the alias Paul R. came to the door of the Ankari Institute with a small 25 centimeter long humanoid body, a gigantic hand with three fingers, with six phalanges, metal implants, and an incredible story. They said that in the previous year, a wakero, or grave robber, known under the name of Mario and his team, discovered a site just a few hundred meters from the figures of Nazca. It was described as a funeral site made up of rooms and tunnels and inside were supposed mummies of humanoid shape along with a number of ceramic, stone, and metal objects. Sometime after the initial discovery, a video surfaced online that was said to be of the cave the specimen came from. In it featured what looked like a terrible stop-motion home movie of aliens battling the explorers. However, this did not originate from Thierry's team or anyone involved with the actual research. It was found on a random Facebook page so it seems like a blatant attempt to discredit the discovery entirely. Don't you think that if these guys had actual videos of the site and live aliens, they would have posted it where they posted everything else? That's what I would have done. It's absurd that people believed it. The area and his team were eager to know if this was a case of fraud, fabrications of modern traffickers, or the discovery of the century. They wanted to know if these grave robbers were pulling their legs. Over the next several months, they did everything in their power to try and save the biological material found at the site. The area sent a letter to the Peruvian Minister of Culture, seen here, to inform them of the discovery and requested intervention to preserve the find. According to the now famous Miles paper, the Ministry of Culture reportedly showed little interest claiming it was a hoax. Now, I don't know about you, but if I fabricated or believed something to be a hoax, the last thing I would do is alert the authorities. In mid-January 2017, Thierry and his team left for Nazca to search for Mario, and by the end of the month, they found him. Over time, they gained the trust of Mario and were loaned the first biological entity, which was approximately 38 centimeters long. On February 4th, the team from the Ankari Institute managed to access two mummified heads of what they refer to as the little gray type, as well as three mummified hands of the tridactyl type. Dr. Edson Salazar-Vivanco performed the first analysis and x-rays of the hands and head. 
Three days later, Thierry and Elaine Bonnet launched a crowdfunding effort on the Yule platform in order to finance DNA and carbon-14 analysis of the specimen. Thanks to the support and donations from over 800 people, mostly from France, they met their goal in just over a month. Over the next couple of days, the Inkari Institute received their first complete body of the little gray type, 60 centimeters long, which the internet quickly named Alberto. Analysis and x-rays soon followed. Then on April 2nd, the Institute received their second complete body, also a little gray type, named Josefina by Thierry. They also received four brains and several objects in metal, stone, and bone. It wasn't until April 23rd, 2017, when Jaime Musan came into the picture and arrived in Peru. This was nearly a year and a half after the discovery was first brought to Thierry. Jaime Musan is a Mexican journalist who works for Televisia and NBC Universal as a journalist and presenter. Many have claimed that his mere association puts the Nazca case in question due to his proximity to previous hoaxes. One hoax that is typically mentioned is a program called Be Witness or the Roswell Slides where a strange body was presented as an alien to researchers, but it turned out to be a deformed child. Jaime was merely an organizer and promoter of the event, and an article later released by one of the researchers, Tony Baragla, later revealed that it was a mistake made in identification by another researcher, and this did not even mention Jaime Musan, who had little involvement in the first place. The blame was placed squarely on one Adam Dew. Here's a great clip of Dr. Stephen Brown, a professor at Ohio State University, speaking on the matter. This thing is the Metapec creature. This is a hoax, a known hoax. And unfortunately, this guy, Jaime Masson, fell for it. Now, one of the reasons why everybody is saying we can ignore all this is because this guy is a hoaxer. I already admitted this is a hoax, but this guy's not a hoaxer. He didn't make the hoax, somebody hoaxed him. He's a journalist, he fell for it, sure enough. This thing is also weird, but it's not a hoax. That's just an honest mistake. Oh, so much is being mad. So much is being said about this journalist, right? And why we can't trust any of this because he's involved. But look, we've already demonstrated that a hoax isn't possible. And the exobiologists, the people who I care about, have no associations with hoaxes. Now it is true that Zalce Benitez did believe that the Atacama mummy, that strange looking human, a uh, child with a deformed skull. He did believe it was an alien. He sent it to Stanford. They analyzed it and they said, no, it's not. This is science. This is not a hoax. This is just a hypothesis that turned out to be false. This is just an honest mistake. Mossan has not perpetrated a hoax. He was merely taken in by one. We see a bunch of argumentative fallacies all over the analyses of these cases in the news, right? So for instance, um, there's an ad hominem fallacy, which basically means I don't have to listen to your argument because I don't like you. I don't like you maybe for good reason, but in philosophy, we don't let you do this. The argument needs to be taken on its own merits. Where it came from doesn't really matter. There's also guilt by association. So our exobiologists are being uh, uh, claimed guilty because of their association with this overly credulous journalist. And then there's what's called begging the question. I won't go through the details of this, but if you look at these articles, they're like, we know these things, we know these people are hoaxers, because these things were proven to be false a long time ago, therefore they're false. That's a circular argument. That's making an argument that depends on the thing that you're trying to prove. Now that that's out of the way, the Nazca mummies are not technically mummies. Unlike Egyptian mummies, they still have their organs inside. They are desiccated corpses found covered in a powdery substance called diatomascus earth, which preserved them. And now the llama skull in mismatched bone debunks. There was a YouTube channel that lined up some of the x-rays, pointed out some of the bones didn't make sense, and compared the brain casing to a llama skull. But the origination of this llama skull debunk actually came from a paper written by Dr. Jose de la Cruz Rios himself, one of the researchers who believes these are actually real corpses. Now why did he argue this if it wasn't what he actually thought? Well, the doctor clarified. He said, the llama skull hypothesis wasn't anything new. The idea had been argued from Peru before. The most significant aspect was bringing the topic to the scientific community through that paper. We had previously submitted that document as a discovery of a new species, but it was rejected many times. The only way it was accepted was by presenting it from a skeptical point of view, and that's how it got accepted. However, it is stated in the same paper that the findings are not conclusive. So mainstream science rejected the non-human hypothesis put forth by the researchers. And in order to even get the paper published, 
they had to twist the truth and say, oh, it might be a llama, but we're not sure. And people wonder why there hasn't been a proper peer-reviewed study published to a mainstream journal. Apparently, most of them won't even let you submit it. And how can it be peer-reviewed if the study can't get published? It's the chicken and the egg situation. There has also been much talk about bones not matching up and just overall confusion and trouble separating the authentic Nazca specimen from the ones put forward by the Peruvian Ministry of Culture. And this is why many people still believe that these are all constructed of animal parts. Now, if we reference this slide in Dr. Richard O'Connor's recent presentation on The Good Trouble Show, we can see that there are upwards of 100 or more corpses or body parts. And according to Peruvian journalist Hoyes Montilla, the Nazca specimen are now being studied in Peru, Brazil, Japan, Russia, Spain, and most recently the U.S. Now, these specimens are not the same as what Flavio Estrada analyzed and presented to the Peruvian Ministry of Culture, which was determined to be made from glued together animal parts. And you can clearly see these are obviously different bodies when compared to an x-ray scan of Josefina. And the initial x-rays of Josefina have led to some thinking that some of the phalanges in the hand were facing the wrong way, but apparently this was merely an issue of perspective when they took the scans. Remember, these bodies are rigid, so the hands cannot be laid completely flat without breaking. And this was the only x-ray of any of the specimen that this anomaly was seen. But regardless, subsequent imaging proved this to be an incorrect assessment. As you can see, all the connective tissues and joints are congruent in the DICOM scans. And once again, none of the specialists who have studied these in person have found any evidence that suggests they were assembled. It seems like something rather easy to clear up if folks actually take the dime to do so. Okay, let's go back to November 2018. At the initiative of Peruvian Congressman Armando Villanueva Mercado, the Incari Institute and a number of experts, including Dr. Jose de la Cruz Rios Lopez, biologist and secretary of health for the state at Campache, Dr. Jose de Jesus Zalce Bernitez, head of the Department of Legal and Forensic Medicine of the Mexican Navy, forensic pathologist, naval surgeon, adjunct professor at both the National School of Anthropology and History and the University of London, Salvador Angel Romero Martinez, specialist in sequencing and bioinformatics analysis with over a decade of experience, and there were other experts as well. They presented their research from the previous year. Their findings, the bodies are authentic. Some have osmium metal implants, one of the rarest elements on the planet. Carbon-14 dating on Maria has her around 1,700 years old. Victoria between 800 and 1,000 years old. The hands up to 7,000 years old and the brain at over 1,000. DNA testing has Maria sharing only 33% of her DNA with humans. For reference, primates like chimpanzees share roughly 99% of their DNA with humans. A banana shares roughly 60%. We have more DNA in common with a banana than Maria. There's 3D reconstructions from the DICOM scans, of which I'm not qualified to comment on, but they look cool. According to many experts, these show connective tissues, nervous systems, internal organs. Then we go to August 1st, 2019, when San Luis Gonzaga University of Ica received four specimen, Maria, Moita, Alberto, and Victoria. Meanwhile, a few months later, the Peruvian Justice Department, on behalf of the Peruvian Ministry of Culture, declared it was not possible to determine the place where the alleged dried remains were found. Not knowing only the location of the site, it is not possible to determine whether or not the site is archaeological. Thus, the act denounced does not constitute a crime. This is Article 334.1 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, amended by Law 30076. But that didn't stop the Ministry of Culture because in October of 2019, officials illegally came to the campus of the University of Ica and demanded the return of the Nazca mummies. Peruvian journalist Hoyce Mantilla reported the intrusion. And this intimidation continued, but Unica officials refused to be intimidated. Led by Professor Roger Zuniga Aviles, over the next several years, the university studied the specimen, while the Ministry of Culture continued their attempts to halt these efforts. During this time, the university was joined by the National University of Engineering of Lima and various international institutions who at this time wished to remain anonymous. The Mexican hearing came. This is when many of us were introduced to this case. The study and analysis continued for four years when they were finally presented at the Mexican Congress at the initiative of Deputy Sergio Carlos Guiterres Luna and Jaime Musan, where the conclusions of a growing number of specialists was that the bodies preserved at the University of Ica are authentic and belong to creatures that once lived. 
During this time, many more specialists had examined the specimen, including Mirko Tio, a traumatologist who confirmed the authenticity of Maria's hand and foot joints. Live scans in a Mexico City hospital followed shortly after the Mexican hearing in September 2023. X-rays and scans were performed live by a new set of specialists who once again saw no fabrication and confirmed the authenticity. In November 2023, a second Mexican hearing dedicated to the Nazca mummies took place. The University of Unica released a preliminary report signed by 11 experts who participated in the research confirming the authenticity. Then we come to the story of the airport dolls. To muddy the waters further, two bodies that were obviously fabricated dolls, later found to be made of human and animal parts, were confiscated at the Peruvian airport. These two dolls were clearly different and had no apparent relation to the specimen being studied by the Incari Institute and numerous other institutions. Since then, there have been papers published. The first official peer review of Maria is underway. Interest in America is rising as a team of American scientists led by Dr. John McDowell traveled to Peru and after their initial examination, determined that the specimen were worthy of additional study. And I've got another video on them. Dr. Stephen Brown from Ohio State University has gotten involved. Dr. Mary Kay Jesse from University of Colorado examined them way back in 2017. And just recently, anesthesiologist Dr. Richard O'Connor reviewed the Nazca mummies and believes they are authentic as well. He was on the Good Trouble show recently with Matt Ford when a familiar name most of you might know, Dr. Gary Nolan of Stanford, chimed in. And he stated, I found the Nazca mummy presentation by Dr. O'Connor extremely scientific and 3D DICOM images compelling. Soon after, Dr. Nolan appeared on the Unidentified Anomalous podcast and had this to say. It was an extremely well done scientific presentation, yep. which was, um, you know, at, at least up to the end of the part of where they were talking about NASCA. So what I found compelling was his, uh, let's say, dissection uh, of the um, images, right? And of the DICOM images, the 3D. Uh, yep. And perhaps yeah. what I found most interesting was at least his claim that he didn't see how they could have been constructed. Now, obviously a claim like that needs to be truly verified at the source with the original materials, with a redo. It's not that the people who did it originally did a bad job, mm -hmm. not at all. It's just that um, anything as extraordinary as this needs to be double checked. It doesn't need extraordinary evidence, it just needs evidence. Um, and, uh, so I just found, I, I, it, it got me a little bit more interested again. Um, I think what I didn't understand, at least at the time was that there are multiple specimens, um, and those multiple specimens are of such variety that to conclude everything from one would be a mistake. Um, I haven't seen anything apart from that other one about maybe one of the mummies um, that says, well, these are clearly fakes, uh, but they're not, they're just because they're not clearly fakes doesn't mean they might not be fakes, mm -hmm. but right. it also suggests that it's worth additional time to look into. Again, it was the, I think it was his mention I was actually speaking with a, a colleague in the Department of Pathology here who's also interested in this mat, in this area. And he said, who, and he's an MD, I'm not. He said the, the discussion around the ligature and uh, he could tr that they could trace the blood vessels, um, that he thought was interesting. That would be hard to fake. Hard to fake doesn't mean it wasn't. I think it's safe to say that this has been a very complicated case to say the least. There's been obvious attempts to discredit the discovery. There's a language barrier issue for the English speaking world, and it's been tough to really get a good sense of what's been transpiring over these last eight years. There's of course been stigma and perhaps a little racial bias, but even with all of that, there is a growing number of people doubling and tripling down that this is a real find. You have to ask yourself, why would they do that? With everything that's out there. At the very least, you should find this interesting and be curious to see where it goes. I'm convinced now the majority of the negative comments I read online aren't from real people. You, you know the ones. Are we still talking about this obvious hoax? Just move on already. Like, it doesn't cost me anything to pay attention to it. If these truly were living creatures at one point, as more and more experts seem to believe, I hope more brave men and women continue to step forward to study them. 
better funding to further research is provided, a million peer reviews get done, and end the debate so the world can finally move past the question of whether they're real or not and dig deeper into the bigger implications of what this means for humanity. Now, I only touched on things from a very high level, but I wanted to provide a general overview of all the main points I've seen, and I hope this overview gave you a bit more clarity. I'll provide all my sources in the description. I encourage you to dig deep and open your mind. I also want to thank you all for your support. Everyone who has subscribed, commented, liked, and shared. I was very happy to see we recently crossed 500 subscribers, so thank you for that. That'll do it for this one, and I'll see you on the flip side. <music>